So, you arrived to Paris and looking where to go. Of course, you will have so many different choices, all equally amazing to explore. But I would like to propose you one choice that stands apart from all the possible Paris attractions. This is Versailles Palace. With 15 million visitors every year, Versailles is one of the most popular tourist attractions in the world. Let's dive into history together and discover this architecture and art masterpiece. It's again a little bit far from uh, Paris, so you need to come here for about one hour and a half and there are different ways that you can reach the destination. So I arrived here by two trains. First I took metro and then I took the train to Chantier station. After that you need to walk for around 30 minutes. I am arriving to Versailles and I'm ready to show you. All visitors are greeted by a statue of Louis XIV on top of a horse, a founder of Versailles. I'm behind the gate that leads to the inner yard of Versailles Palace. Near this gate, all the tourists who don't want to pay to enter the palace, they gather near this gate trying to take some photos of these inner yard and surroundings but I paid my 18 euro entrance fee and now I'm entering the premises and the palace itself to see beautiful decor and show you in my video hope you like it a former haunting lodge it was transformed to become one of the greatest achievements in French 17th century art. The last resort for Louis XIV and Marie Antoinette, it is so luxurious that if it was built today, it would cost 2 billion US dollars. I will start perhaps with my favorite exhibition about royal animals. Animals have had a major place in the Palace of Versailles during the ancient regime. During that time, many animals were very useful to their masters, especially kings of France. Being not only excellent hunters, those animals were regarded as pets and were very loved by their owners. The king's favorite dogs were often immortalized, with their names written in golden letters. This amazing exhibition is unique and stands apart from all other Versailles collections, housing unique golden relics such as vases, furniture and statues. French, it is known as Chateau de Versailles. Constructed under the guidance of Louis XIV, every detail of the palace was intended to glorify the king. Did you know? Versailles Palace is so huge that even with hundreds of servants employed in just the kitchen, Louis XIV frequently add cold dishes due to the distance from the kitchen to the dining areas. Everything used to construct and decorate the palace was created in France. This extended to the art, tapestries and mirrors that line its walls. Here was signed the Treaty of Versailles, which put an end to the First World War. This is the Hall of Mirrors, the most famous room in the palace, 
with 357 Venetian mirrors and illuminated with 3,000 candles. Under the guidance of Louis XIV, the residence was transformed into an immense complex surrounded by stylized French and English gardens. Dears, gardens of Versailles are just splendid. I have no words to actually tell you how much I'm impressed by these beautiful gardens, but you need not just one day to visit really it's such a big garden there are so many different sections of gardens to visit so if you really want to visit i think you need like a couple of full days to visit me i just uh, i guess it did the main part the gardens of versailles were planned by andre le nôtre perhaps the most famous and influential landscape architect in french history the gardens of Versailles, covering more than 3,000 acres, include 400 sculptures and 1,400 fountains. Here you can see the Swiss Lake, an artificial lake that replaced a stretch of problematic marshland that was known to the ancient regime as the Aton Point, or Stinking Pond. To the south of the terrace, there is the Orangerie, a grove planned in 1685, consisting of four grass sections and a circular pond. It includes more than 1,000 trees. Back then, it was considered good manners for courtiers to gratify the king by offering him their own orange trees. Therefore, Orange trees from Portugal, Spain and Italy appeared here. Besides, visitors can enjoy watching lemon trees, oleander, palm and pomegranate trees, some more than 200 years old. They are all housed in the orangerie during winter and spread out across its parterre in summer. It is a truly magnificent experience roaming around the Orangerie, so I recommend to visit it during your Versailles visit. Made of bronze, marble and lead, 221 works of art in Versailles Gardens make it the biggest open-air sculpture museum in the world. Apollo is perhaps the most remarkable statue in the gardens, as it serves as a metaphor for the King Louis XIV, who was called the sun. Exploring Versailles through its sculptures allows us to appreciate one of the most beautiful pages in the history of French art. A broad avenue flanked by rows of large trees and statues, ends at the spectacular fountain of Apollo. Charles Le Brun designed the centerpiece depicting the Greek god Apollo rising from the sea in a four-horse chariot. What I like is that I'm visiting um, these gardens during autumn time because I was personally waiting for autumn to arrive here in, in France because I haven't seen uh, yellow and orange, red and colorful leaves 
for a long time so I I'm really like happy to see the trees wear their autumn colors and I'm happy that I can show it also in my videos I visited Versailles during my Paris vacation if you plan to visit it too Keep in mind that you will need minimum one full day to partially explore the palace and the gardens. I assume you will need more like five full days to fully percept the image and the atmosphere of the place without a rush. Anyway, Versailles should be a must-visit site in your France itinerary. Versailles is my second episode in my French series. My first episode was devoted to top sites to visit in Paris in one day. Be sure to watch it by clicking the link above. And subscribe my channel for more French episodes and interesting travel videos around the world. See you next Sunday in my new episode about Lyon.